Hare Krishna everyone, <clears throat> welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. It's been a long, beautiful, winding road. We've been hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam now for, what, more than a year and a half? And uh, <clears throat> more than, quite a bit more than a year and a half, March. And uh, we're coming to the end, as sad as that may seem. Of course, it's never the end. Uh, we can keep reading it again and again, and we will. But um, we've reached the 12th canto, which is the last canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we're pretty much halfway through uh, the second to the last chapter. And I anticipate and plan to finish the Srimad Bhagavatam today. Maybe, maybe we won't. We'll see what's at the end. Um, the Srimad Bhagavatam was Srila Prabhupada's magnum opus. <clears throat> it was his um, dearest desire to present the Srimad Bhagavatam with complete uh, commentary purports to the Western world and to the world uh, in the line of authority coming directly from Lord Brahma and Narada Muni Vyasadeva, Shukadeva Goswami and all of the great Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and all of the great followers, sincere followers and intimate associates of these great personalities of the supreme personality of Godhead it's a literal incarnation of Krishna it's eternal it has the same stature as the Vedas Nigama, Kalpa, Tador, Galitam, Palam we heard this in the very beginning um, of the Bhagavatam. It is the ripened fruit of the Vedic tree of knowledge. And it, the, the word, according to Jiva Goswami, in his Tattva Sandarbha, the word Nigama means literally Veda, Shruti. And Agama means uh, Smriti. So this Bhagavatam is actually non-different than the Shruti. It is Shruti. It was brought into the uh, material world uh, at the beginning of the Kali Yuga by Srila Vyasadev through his meditation. Vyasadev uh, edited the Vedas. He edited the Puranas. He edited the Upanishads. Um, he, com he compiled, he wrote himself. He was the author of the Mahabharata and the Vedanta Sutra. He is a literary incarnation of Krishna. But when his spiritual master Narada Muni consoled him after he was not satisfied, after editing all those books and compiling all those books, he, a he asked him to uh, glorify exclusively the Supreme Personality of Godhead and pure devotional service unto Him. And when he got that instruction, in order to become satisfied, when he got that instruction, he went into trance. This is described in the first canto, which is basically how the Bhagavatam appeared. Um, and he saw, it says in the verse, he saw Krishna, he saw the material energy, he saw this jivas, he saw everything means that he brought the Bhagavatam from his own meditation into the external world. This is the position of the original rishis. They brought the, the Vedic hymns and the Vedic mantras that was given in a seed form from Lord Brahma into the world through their actual meditation, through their own hearts. The other kind of rishis are Shota rishis and they 
repeat what they've heard from the original rishis. But Bede Vyasa is more than a Shrota Rishi. He's a literary incarnation of Krishna and he's also categorized as a great Rishi, as, as great as the original Rishis. And therefore he brought the Srimad Bhagavatam into the external world. And by associating with the Bhagavatam, we associate with Krishna directly. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and preached the Srimad Bhagavatam on that basis, with that realization of what the Srimad Bhagavatam was for the first time in the Kali Yuga. Uh, and his great follower, Srila Sanatana Goswami, compiled a glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam, which says it all. Srimad Bhagavata, Mahima Stotram, and it goes like this. <clears throat> Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho <clears throat> Kalitvan Dodita Ditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees O Master Srimad Bhagavatam You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali You are the exact image of Sri Krishna Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Sharayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you. You were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Shri Krishna himself. There it is in black and white. Madek o mad sangin, mad guru mad madhana, man nisadaka mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadu tadayin adini chuchita kada hanamun chagada chen mam prem narit kanta yospura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen. Please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this 12th chapter of the 12th canto summarizes uh, the contents of the entire Bhagavatam. And we've about, we're about halfway through. So we'll begin with text 28 and 29. Also glorified <clears throat> are the innumerable pastimes of Sri Krishna, the enemy of the demons, including his childhood pastimes of sucking out Putana's life, Putana's life air, along with her breast milk, breaking the cart, trampling down Trinavarta, killing Bakasura, Vatsasura, and Nagasura, and the pastimes he enacted when Brahma hid his calves and cowherd boyfriends in a cave. 30. The Srimad Bhagavatam tells how Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram killed the demon Denukasura and his companions, how Lord Balaram destroyed Pralambasura, and also how Krishna saved the cowherd boys from a raging forest fire that had encircled them. Text 31 to 33. 
the chastisement of the serpent Kaliya, the rescue of Nanda Maharaj from the great snake, the severe vows performed by the young gopis who, sat, who thus satisfied Lord Krishna, the mercy he showed the wives of the Vedic Brahmanas who felt remorse, the lifting of Govardhan Hill followed by the worship and bathing ceremony performed by Indra and the Surabhi cow, Lord Krishna's nocturnal pastimes with the cowherd girls, and the killing of the foolish demons, Shankatruda, Arishta, and Keshi. All these pastimes are elaborately recounted. 34. The Bhagavatam describes the arrival of Akrura, the subsequent departure of Krishna and Balarama, the lamentation of the gopis, and the touring of Mathura. Also narrated are how Krishna and Balaram killed the elephant Kuvalayapida, the wrestlers Mushtika and Chanura, and Kangsa and other demons, as well as how Krishna brought back the dead son of his spiritual master, Sandipani Muni. Then, O Brahmanas, this scripture recounts how Lord Hari, while residing in Mathura in the company of Uddhava and Balaram, performed pastimes for the satisfaction of the Yadu dynasty. Text 37. Also described of the annihilation of each of the many armies brought by Jarasana, the killing of the barbarian king Kaliyavana, and the establishment of Dwaraka city. This work also describes how Lord Krishna brought from heaven the Parijata tree and the Sudharma assembly hall and how he kidnapped Rukmini by defeating all his rivals in battle. Also narrated are how Lord Krishna in the battle with Banasura defeated Lord Shiva by making him yawn, how the Lord cut off Banasura's arms, and how he killed the master of Pragyotishtapur, and then rescued the young princesses held captive in that city. 40 and 41. There are descriptions of the powers and the deaths of the king of Chedi, Chedi Pandraka, Shalva, the foolish Dantavakra, Shambara, Dvidvida, Pita, Mura, Panchajana, and other demons, along with the description of how Varanasi was burned to the ground. The Bhagavatam also recounts how Lord Krishna relieved the earth's burden by engaging the Pandavas in the battle of Kurukshetra. 42 and 43. How the Lord withdrew his own dynasty on the pretext of the Brahmana's curse, Vasudeva's conversation with Narada, the extraordinary conversation between Uddhava and Krishna, which reveals the science of the self in complete detail and elucidates the religious principles of human society. And then how Lord Krishna gave up this mortal world by his own mystic power. The Bhagavatam narrates all these events. 44. This work, this work also describes people's characteristics and behavior in the different ages. The chaos, the chaos men experience in the age of Kali, the four kinds of annihilation, and the three kinds of creation. 45. There are also an account of the passing away of the wise and saintly king Vishnurata Parikshit, <clears throat> an explanation of how Srila Vyasadeva disseminated the branches of the Vedas, a pious narration concerning Markandeya Rishi, and a description of the detailed arrangement of the Lord's universal form and his form as the sun, the soul of the universe. 46. Thus, O best of the Brahmanas, I have explained herein 
what you have inquired from me. This literature has glorified in full detail the activities of the Lord's pastime incarnations. If when falling, slipping, feeling pain or sneezing, one involuntarily cries out in a loud voice, obeisances to Lord Hari, one will automatically, one will be automatically freed from all his sinful reactions. Purport. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur explains that Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is always loudly chanting the song Hadaye Nama Krishna in the courtyard of Shiva's Thakur and that this same Lord Chaitanya will free us from our materialistic enjoying propensity if we also loudly chant the glories of the Supreme Lord Hari. 48. <clears throat> when people properly glorify the Supreme Personality of Godhead or simply hear about His power, the Lord personally enters their hearts and cleanses away every trace of misfortune just as the sun removes the darkness or as a powerful wind drives away the clouds. Purport one may not be satisfied by the example of the sun removing the darkness, since sometimes the darkness in a cave is not removed by the sun. Therefore the example is given of a strong wind that drives away a cover of clouds. It is thus emphatically stated here that the Supreme Lord will remove from the heart of His devotee the darkness of material illusion. 49. Words that do not describe the transcendental personality of Godhead, but instead deal with temporary matters, are simply false and useless. Only those words that manifest the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord are actually truthful, auspicious, and pious. Purport. Sooner or later, all material literature and discussion must fail the test of time. Shall I repeat that again? You don't mind permission granted? Sooner or later, all material literature and discussion must fail the test of time. On the other hand, the transcendental descriptions of the Supreme Lord can free us from the bondage of illusion and restore us to our eternal status as loving servants of the Lord. Although men who are like animals may criticize the glorification of the Absolute Truth, those who are civilized should go on vigorously propagating the transcendental glories of the Lord. Text 50 Those words describing the glories of the all-famous personality of Godhead are attractive, relishable, and ever fresh. Indeed, such words are a perpetual festival for the mind, and they dry up the ocean of misery. I have to say the Sanskrit for that, it's so beautiful. Tad evaram yang ruchinang navam navam Tadeva Shashwan Manaso Mahotsavam Tadeva Shokar Navashoshanam Rinam Yadutagmashloka Yesho Nugiyate. Those words describing the glories of the all famous personality of Godhead are attractive, relishable, and ever fresh. Indeed, such words are a perpetual festival for the mind and they dry up the ocean of misery. Those words that do not describe the glories of the Lord who alone can sanctify the atmosphere of the whole universe 
are considered to be like unto a place of pilgrimage for crows and are never resorted to by those situated in transcendental knowledge. The pure and saintly devotees take interest only in topics glorifying the infallible Supreme Lord. Or as Vaishya Shikha Prabhu would say, stop reading breaking news. Text 52 Tadvag visargo janakaga samplavo yashmin pratishlokam abadyabadyapi na man anantas yashon kitani jat shrinvanti gayanti vinanti sadavaha. On the other hand, that literature which is full of descriptions of the transcendental glories of the name, fame, forms, pastimes, and so on of the unlimited Supreme Lord is a different creation full of transcendental words directed upon bringing about a revolution in the impious lives of this world's misdirected civilization. Such transcendental literatures, even though imperfectly composed, are heard, sung, and accepted by purified men who are thoroughly honest. I heard from Gopi Purananda Prabhu that there are different methods according to the Vedas for determining what is the actual uh, subject of a work. And one of them is if it, if, it, if it describes that topic in the beginning and the other is if it describes it in the beginning and in the end. So these two verses happen in the beginning and the end. Therefore, they are the, the, the actual summum, the sum total of the Bhagavatam, the subject of the Bhagavatam, purpose of the Bhagavatam. Text 53. Naish karmya ap vyachuta bhava varjitam nashobhate jnanam alam niranjanam Kutak punak shashtvare badra ishvare na yarpitam karmayad apyanutamam. Knowledge of self realization, even though free from all material affinity, does not look well if devoid of a conception of the infallible God. What then is the use of even the most properly performed fruitive activities? which are naturally painful from the very beginning and transient by nature if they are not utilized for the devotional service of the Lord. Purport. This and the previous two verses are found in a slightly different form in the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam 1, 5, 10 to 12. The translations are based on Srila Prabhupada's. Text 54. The great endeavor one undergoes in executing the ordinary social and religious duties of the Varnashram system, in performing austerities, in hearing from the Ved Vedas, culminates only in the achievement of mundane fame and opulence. But by respecting and attentively hearing the recitation of the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord, the husband of the goddess of fortune, one can remember his lotus feet. Text 55 Remembrance of Lord Krishna's lotus feet destroys everything inauspicious and awards the greatest good fortune. It purifies the heart and bestows devotion for the Supreme Soul along with knowledge enriched with real realization and renunciation. 56. O most eminent of Brahmanas, you are all indeed extremely fortunate since you have already placed within your hearts Lord Sri Narayana, the Personality of Godhead, the Supreme Controller and the ultimate soul of all existence, beyond whom there is no other God you have undeviating love for him 
and thus I request you to worship him. 57. I, have, I, also, <clears throat> I also have now been fully reminded, I also have been fully reminded of the science of God, which I previously heard from the mouth of the great sage Shukadev Goswami. I was present in the assembly of great sages who heard him speak to King Parikshit as the monarch sat fasting until death. Text 58 O Brahmanas, I have thus described to you the glories of the Supreme Lord, Vasudev, whose extraordinary activities are most worthy of glorification. This narration destroys all that is inauspicious. 59. One who within one who with one who with undeviating attention constantly recites this literature at every moment of every hour, as well as one who faithfully hears even one verse or half a verse, or a single line, or even half a line, certainly purifies his very self. Text 60 One who hears this Bhagavatam on the Ekadashi or Dvadashi day is assured of long life, and one who recites it with careful attention while fasting is purified of all sinful reactions. One who controls his mind, fasts at the holy places, Pushkara, Mathura, or Dwaraka, and studies this scripture, will be freed from all fear. Upon the person who glorifies this Purana by chanting or hearing it, the demigods, sages, siddhas, pitas, Manus and kings of the earth bestow all desirable things. By studying this Bhagavatam, a Brahmana can enjoy the same rivers of honey, ghee, and milk he enjoys by studying the hymns of the Rig, Yajur, and Samavedas. There it is right there. A Brahmana who diligently reads this essential compilation of all the Puranas, will go to the supreme destination, which the Supreme Lord Himself has herein described. 65. <clears throat> A Brahmana who studies the Srimad Bhagavatam achieves firm intelligence in devotional service. A king who studies it gains sovereignty over the earth. A Vaisha acquires great treasure, and a Shudra is freed from sinful reactions. Lord Hari, the supreme controller of all beings, annihilates the accumulated sins of the Kali age. Yet other literatures do not constantly glorify Him, but that supreme personality of Godhead appearing in his innumerable personal expansions, is abundantly and constantly described throughout the various narrations of this Srimad Bhagavatam. Text 67 I bow down to that unborn and infinite Supreme Soul whose personal energies affect the creation, maintenance, and destruction of the material universe. Even Brahma, Indra, Shankara, and the other lords of the heavenly planets cannot fathom the glories of that infallible personality of Godhead. 68. I offer my obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the eternal Lord and the leader of all other deities who by evolving his nine material energies has arranged within himself the abode of all moving and non-moving creatures and who was always situated in pure transcendental consciousness. 69. 
let me offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master, the son of Vyasadeva, Shukadeva Goswami. It is he who defeats all inauspicious things within this universe. Although in the beginning he was absorbed in the happiness of Brahman realization and was living in a secluded place, giving up all other types of consciousness, he became attracted by the pleasing, most melodious pastimes of Lord Sri Krishna. He therefore mercifully he therefore mercifully spoke this supreme Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the bright light of the absolute truth and which describes the activities of the Lord. Purport Without offering respectful obeisances to Shukadev Goswami and other great acharyas in his line, one cannot possibly gain the privilege of entering into the deep transcendental meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam. Thus end the purports of the humble servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to the 12th canto, 12th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled The Topics of Srimad Bhagavatam Summarized. <laughs> Srimad Bhagavatam Ji Jai, Bhagavad Purana Ki Jai, Srimad Sukadeva Goswami Ki Jai, Srimad Vyasadeva Ki Jai. Kisuta Goswami ki jai, Shonaka Maharaj ki jai, Sage Nami Sharanya ki jai, Rope Nandi, Hari Hari Ho. Okay, we're going to move on because the next chapter is very short and we have time to finish the Bhag- Srimad Bhagavatam today on this 12th day of May 2020. Chapter 13. The glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> In this final chapter, Sri Sutta Goswami describes the length of each of the Puranas, along with the subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam, its purpose, how to give it as a gift, the glories of such gift giving, and the glories of chanting and hearing it. <clears throat> The total corpus of the Puranas includes 400,000 verses, 18,000 of which constitute Srimad Bhagavatam. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan, instructed Brahma in this Srimad Bhagavatam, whose narrations produce detachment from matter and, and, and which contains the essence of all the Vedanta. One who gives the Srimad Bhagavat Purana as a gift will attain the highest destination. Among all the Puranas, Srimad Bhagavatam is the best and it is the most dear thing to all the, Vais- to the Vaishnavas. It reveals that spotless, supreme knowledge accessible to the Paramahamsas and it also reveals the process by which one can become free from the reactions of material work, a process enriched with knowledge, renunciation and devotion. Having thus glorified the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami meditates upon Lord Sri Narayana as the original absolute truth, who is perfectly pure, free from all contamination, devoid of sorrow and immoral and and, 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 and immor- immorality. It's a mistake. Immorality. No, immoral. Immoral. Oh. Excuse me. Yes, you're right. Having thus glorified the Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami meditates upon Lord Sri Narayana as the original absolute truth who is perfectly pure, free from all contamination, devoid of sorrow and immortal. Then he offers obeisances to the greatest yogi, Sri Shukadev, who is non-different from the Absolute Truth. Finally, praying with true devotion, Sutta Goswami offers respects to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Hari, who takes away all misery. Text 1 Sutta Goswami said, 
unto that personality whom Brahma, Varuna, Indra, Rudra, and the Maruts praise by chanting transcendental hymns and reciting the Vedas with all their corollaries, Padakramas and Upanishads, to whom the chanters of the Samaveda always sing, whom the perfected yogis see within their minds after fixing themselves in trance and becoming fully absorbed in thoughts of him, and whose limit can never be found by any demigod or demon, unto that Supreme Personality of Godhead I offer my humble obeisances. 2. When the Supreme Personality of Godhead appeared as Lord Kurma, a tortoise, his back was scratched by the sharp-edged stones lying on massive whirling Mount Mandara, and this scratching made the Lord sleepy. May you all be protected by the winds caused by the Lord's breathing in this sleepy condition. Ever since that time, even up to the present day, the ocean tides have imitated the Lord's inhalation and exhalation by piously coming in and going out. Purport. <clears throat> At times, we alleviate an itching sensation by blowing on it, blowing upon it. Similarly, <clears throat> Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur explains, the breathing of the Supreme Personality of Godhead can alleviate the itching sensation within the minds of mental speculators, as well as the itching of the material senses of conditioned souls engaged in sense gratification. <clears throat> Thus, by meditating on the windy breath of Lord Krit Kurma, the tortoise incarnation, all categories of conditioned souls can be relieved of the deficiencies of material existence <clears throat> and come to the liberated spiritual platform. One must simply allow the pastimes of Lord Krishna to blow within one's heart like a favorable breeze then one will surely find spiritual peace. Text 3 Now please hear a summation of the verse length of each of the Puranas. Then hear of the prime subject and purpose of this Bhagavat Purana, the proper method of giving it as a gift. Whoa, Vaishya, did you hear that? Vaishya Jikaprabhu, listen up. Now please hear a summation of the verse length of each of the Puranas, then hear of the prime subject and purpose of this Bhagavad Purana, the proper method of giving it as a gift, the glories of such gift-giving, and finally, the glories of hearing and chanting this literature. Purport. Srimad Bhagavatam is the best of all Puranas. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that all the other Puranas will now be mentioned just as the assistants of a king are mentioned in, in connection with his glorification. 49. The Brahma Purana consists of 10,000 verses. The Padma Purana of 55,000, Sri Vishnu Purana of 23,000, of the Shiva Purana of 24,000, and Srimad Bhagavatam of 18,000. <clears> the Narada Purana has 25,000 verses, the Markandeya Purana 9,000, the Agni Purana 15,400, the Bhavishya Purana 14,500, the Brahma Vaidvarta Purana, 18,000, and the Linga Purana, 11,000. The Varaha Purana contains 24,000 verses, the Skanda Purana, 81,100, the Vamana Purana, 10,000, the Kurma Purana, 17,000, the Matya Purana, 
14,000, the Garuda Purana, 19,000, and the Brahmanda Purana, 12,000. Thus the total number of verses in all the Puranas is 400,000. 18,000 of these, once again, belong to the beautiful Bhagavatam. Purport Srila Jiva Goswami has quoted from the Matsu Purana as follows. After compiling the 18 Puranas, Vyasadeva, the son of Satyavati, composed the entire Mahabharat, which contains the essence of all the Puranas. It consists of over 100,000 verses and is filled with all the ideas of the Vedas. There is also the account of the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra, spoken by Balmiki, an account originally related by Lord Brahma in one billion verses. That Ramayana was later summarized by Narada and related to Valmiki, who further presented it to ma- mankind so that human beings could attain the goals of religiosity, sense gratification, and economic development. <clears throat> the total number of verses in all the Puranas and Itihasas, histories, is thus known in human society to amount to 525,000. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur points out that in the first canto, third chapter of this work, after Sutta Goswami lists the incarnations of the Godhead, he adds the special phrase, Krishna's two, Bhagavan Swayam. But Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. Similarly, after mentioning all of the Puranas, Sri Sutta Goswami again mentions the Srimad Bhagavatam to emphasize that it is the chief of all Puranic literatures. Text 10 It was to Lord Brahma that the Supreme Personality of Godhead first revealed the Srimad Bhagavatam in full. At the time, Brahma, frightened by material existence, was sitting on the lotus flower that had grown from the Lord's navel. Purport Lord Krishna enlightened Brahma with the knowledge of Srimad Bhagavatam before the creation of this universe, as indicated here by the word Purvam. Also, the first verse of the Bhagavatam states, Tenhe Brahma Rida Ya Adi Kavaye. Lord Krishna expanded perfect knowledge into the heart of Lord Brahma. Because conditioned souls can experience only temporary objects, which are created, maintained, and destroyed, they cannot readily understand that Srimad Bhagavatam is an eternal, transcendental literature non-different from the Absolute Truth. As stated in the Mundaka Upanishad, 1.1.1 Brahma Devanam Pratamak Sambhava Vishwasya Karta Bhuvanasya Gopta Sabrahma Vidyang Sabravidya Prastitam Sabrahma Vidyam Sabravidya Pratishtam Atarvaya Dreshta Putraya Praha Among all the demigods, Brahma was the first to take birth. He is the creator of this universe and also its protector. To his eldest son, Atarva, he instructed the spiritual science of the self, which is the basis of all other branches of knowledge. Despite his exalted position, however, Brahma still fears the influence of the Brahma of the Lord's illusory potency. Thus, this energy seems virtually insurmountable. But Lord Chaitanya is so kind that during his missionary activities in eastern and southern India, he freely distributed Krishna consciousness to everyone, urging them to become teachers of Bhagavad Gita. Lord Chaitanya, who is Krishna himself, encouraged the people by saying, By my order, just become a teacher of Lord Krishna's message and save this country. 
I assure you that the waves of Maya will never stop your progress. CC Madhya 7128 If we give up all sinful activities and engage constantly in the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, victory is assured in our personal lives and also in our missionary efforts. 11 and 12. From beginning to end, the Srimad Bhagavatam is full of narrations that encourage renunciation of material life, as well as nectarian accounts of Lord Hari's transcendental pastimes, which give ecstasy to the saintly devotees and demigods. This Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedanta philosophy because its subject matter is the absolute truth, <clears throat> which, while non-different from the spirit soul, is the ultimate reality, one without a second. The goal of this literature is exclusive devotional service unto that supreme truth. Purport Vairagya, renunciation, means giving up everything that has no relation with the absolute truth. Saintly devotees and demigods are enthused by the nectar of the Lord's spiritual pastimes, which are the essence of all Vedic knowledge. Vedic knowledge elaborately negates the ultimate reality of material things by emphasizing their temporary, fleeting existence. The ultimate goal is vastu, the factual substance, which is abhitivyam, advitiyam, one without a second. That unique absolute truth is a transcendental person far beyond the mundane categories and characteristics of personality found in our pale material world. Thus the ultimate goal of Srimad Bhagavatam is to train the sincere reader in love of Godhead. Lord Krishna is supremely lovable because his eternal transcendental qualities because of his eternal transcendental qualities the beauty of this world is a dim reflection of the unlimited beauty of the lord without compromise shrimad bhagavatam persistently declares the glories of the absolute truth and is therefore the supreme spiritual literature awarding a full taste of the nectar of love of Krishna in full Krishna consciousness. 13. On the full moon day of the month of Bhadra, if on the full moon day of the month of Bhadra one places Srimad Bhagavatam on a golden throne and gives it as a gift, he will attain the supreme transcendental destination. Purport. One should place Srimad Bhagavatam on a golden throne because it is the king of all literature. During the month of Bhadra, the sun to which this king of literature is compared enters the constellation of Leo and looks as if raised up on a royal throne. Thus one may unreserved, unreservedly worship Srimad Bhagavatam, the supreme divine scripture. All other Puranic scriptures shine forth in the assembly of saintly devotees only as long as that great ocean of nectar, Srimad Bhagavatam, is not heard. Purport Other Vedic literatures and other scriptures of the world remain prominent until the Srimad Bhagavatam is duly heard and understood. Srimad Bhagavatam is the ocean of nectar and the supreme literature. By faithful hearing, recitation, and distribution of Srimad Bhagavatam, the world will be sanctified and other inferior literatures will fade to minor status. 15. Srimad Bhagavatam is declared to be the essence of all Vedanta philosophy. One who has felt satisfaction from its nectarian mellow 
will never be attracted to any other literature. Text 16 Just as the Ganga is the greatest of all rivers, Lord Achyuta is supreme among deities, and Lord Shambhu, Shiva, the greatest of Vaishnavas, so Srimad Bhagavatam is the greatest of all Puranas. O Brahmanas, in the same way that the city of Kashi is unexcelled among holy places, Srimad Bhagavatam is supreme among all the Puranas. Srimad Bhagavatam is the spotless Purana. It is most dear to the Vaishnavas because it describes the pure and supreme knowledge of the Paramahamsas. This Bhagavatam reveals the means for becoming free from all material work, together with the processes of transcendental knowledge, renunciation and devotion. Anyone who seriously tries to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, who properly hears and chants it with devotion, becomes completely liberated. Purport Because Srimad Bhagavatam is completely free of contamination by the modes of nature, it is endowed with extraordinary spiritual beauty and is therefore dear to the pure devotees of the Lord. The word Paramahamsyam indicates that even completely liberated souls are eager to hear and narrate Srimad Bhagavatam. Those who are trying to be liberated should faithfully serve this literature by hearing and reciting it with faith and devotion. I meditate upon that pure and spotless Supreme Absolute Truth <clears throat> who is free from suffering and death and who in the beginning personally revealed this incomparable torchlight of knowledge to Brahma. Brahma then spoke it to the sage Narada, who narrated it to Krishna Dvaipayana Vyas. Srila Vyas revealed this Bhagavatam to the greatest of sages, Shukadev Goswami, and Shukadev mercifully spoke it to Maharaj Parikshit. Purport The first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam states, Satyam Padam Ti Mahi, I meditate upon the Supreme Truth. And now at the conclusion of this magnificent transcendental literature, the same auspicious sounds are vibrated. The words Tad Rupena, Tad Rupina, and Tad Atmana in this verse clearly indicate that Lord Sri Krishna Himself originally spoke Srimad Bhagavatam to Brahma, and then continued to speak this literature through the agency of Narada Muni, Dvaipayana Vyas, Shukadev Goswami, and other great sages. In other words, whenever saintly devotees vibrate Srimad Bhagavatam, it is to be understood that Lord Sri Krishna Himself is speaking the Absolute Truth through the agency of His pure representatives. Anyone who submissively hears this literature from the Lord's bona fide devotees, transcends his conditioned state and becomes qualified to meditate upon the Absolute Truth and serve Him. Text 20 We offer our obeisances to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vasudev, the all-pervading witness, who mercifully explained this science to Brahma when he anxiously desired salvation. 21. I offer my humble obeisances to Sri Shukadeva Goswami, the best of mystic sages and a personal manifestation of the Absolute Truth. He saved Maharaj Prikshit, who was bitten by the snake of material existence. Purport. Sutta Goswami now offers obeisances to his own spiritual master, Shukadev Goswami. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti clarifies that just as Arjuna was placed into material confusion so that Bhagavad Gita might be spoken, so King Parikshit, a pure, liberated soul of the Lord, was cursed to die so that Srimad Bhagavatam might be spoken. Actually, King Parikshit is Vishnu Rata, 
eternally under the protection of the Lord. Shukadeva Goswami liberated the king from his so-called illusion to exhibit the merciful nature of a pure devotee and the enlightening effect of his association. Text 22 <clears throat> O Lord of Lords, O Master, please grant us pure devotional service at your lotus feet, life after life. Text 23 Nama Sankirtanam Yasya Sarva Papa Pranashanam Pranamo Dukashamanas Tam Namami Harim Param Offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Hari, the congregational chanting of whose holy names destroys all sinful reactions and the offering of obeisances unto whom relieves all material sufferings. Thus end the purports of the humble servants of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to the 12th canto, 13th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled The Glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. 12th canto was completed at Gainesville, Florida, on Sunday, July 18th, 1982. End of the twelfth canto. Conclusion. We offer our most respectful obeisances <clears throat> unto the lotus feet of His Divine Grace, Om Vishnupad Paramahamsam, Paribrajaka Charya, Asho Tarasata Sri Srimad, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and by His mercy to the six Goswamis of Vrindavan, to Lord Chaitanya and His eternal associates. To Lord Sri Radha Krishna, to, to Sri Sri Radha Krishna, and to the Supreme Transcendental Literature, Srimad Bhagavatam, by the causeless mercy of Srila Prabhupada, we have we have been able to approach the lotus feet of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Srila Vijiva Goswami, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Srila Sridhar Swami, and other great Vaishnava Acharyas and by carefully studying their liberated commentaries, we have humbly tried to complete the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are the insignificant servants of our spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, and by his mercy, we have been allowed to serve him through the presentation of Srimad Bhagavatam. All glory to the devotees of the Lord. All glory to our previous Acharyas. All glory to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glory to Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. All glory to all the devotees of this Krishna movement. All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Sri Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Well, that's enough to take your breath away. Are there any reflections or Vaishya <coughs> Shikha Prabhu says Hare Krishna I didn't let on Vaishya Shikha Prabhu I want to <coughs> offer my humble obeisances unto you because it's by your mercy that I <coughs> am doing this uh, you came out to Govardhan many, many, many years ago, 20 years ago, and you started reading the Bhagavatam with a couple of other devotees on the roof. And somehow or other, the mosquitoes got to us, and then I suggested, why don't you come downstairs? And that was the beginning of a wonderful 19-year experience of hearing the Bhagavatam with you every day for at least four or five hours 
in in Bhag, in Govardhan, that holiest of places, at the foot of Govardhan Hill, in this Gan Bhakti Vedanta Ashram. And before long, there were more. The word got out, and more and more devotees started coming. And it developed into a kind of, you know, profound spiritual experience. The Kartik Vrat, perfect, as we just heard, perfect way to glorify the Lord, and to um, and this under in this format of reading straight through. Of course, we can't do it for the same amount of time every day. Although that sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? After what we just heard, it sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? Let's, ha- let's be locked down permanently. <laughs> Spread the sweetness. Anyway, uh, so by your mercy, I'm trying to do this every day with the same format that you developed. Uh, it's not exactly the same when you have a whole big room full of 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 as it grew every year and have everyone give their realizations and the way you so masterfully manage the show you know, and get everybody to come out and so now it's done we've read the whole Bhagavatam cover to cover and uh, it's published along with reflections of many exalted sincere devotees and explanations discussions it's a unique product and unique uh, presentation and it's by your mercy Vaisheshika Prabhu Hare Krishna I offer my humble obeisances to you thank you again and again as do all of us who taught us the real meaning of the sacrifice of Bhadra where you give the gift of the Bhagavatam. Of course, you're giving the, the gift of the Bhagavatam every day, all day. Hare Krishna. Next is something from Dina Nat Nitai. Dal Nitai? Dal Nitai? Dina Nat Nitai. Dina Nat Nitai. Hare Krishna, Krishna Dina Nat Nitai. Da Nitai. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humblest obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. I am unlimitedly grateful for your daily reading sessions. I have been converting them to audio and listening throughout the day. Mm. I can certainly say that it already transformed my heart. Mm. I especially like when you stop at certain important points and reread it again or discuss it with devotees to churn the nectar. Thank you from all my heart for giving your association to all of us. Your servant, Dina Nanitai Das. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Dina Nanitai. I'm just giving you, trying to give you Srila Prabhupada's uh, mercy he gave to me. It has nothing to do with it. I'm trying to be transparent and, you know, basically just read the Bhagavatam. But I, I deeply appreciate it. Your, I'll try to, uh, as graciously as possible, accept your uh, realized words. If it's helping you, that's it. That's enough for me. Just think of how much suffering the world's going through right now and how much nectar we're getting daily, day after day after day, ever increasing as the increasing of the world is getting worse. That doesn't mean we don't feel suffering of the world. We feel great compassion. That's why we're doing this every day, to try to relieve the suffering of the world and spread this transcendental vibration. This is Srila Prabhupada's movement. This was the life of Srila Prabhupada. He worked so hard to finish this Bhagavatam and to write all of his books. And then we're going to go on tomorrow to Chaitanya Charitamrita. And you think this was sweet. Chaitanya Charitamrita, as he says, is the relish, is the relishing. So we're we're very fortunate to be able to be with all the devotees like this. 
This is from Jiva Maya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Jiva Maya. She says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, you've helped us both so much and your continued association has given me a new husband. <laughs> Just kidding, but he is fired up like I've never seen and your example is sinking into every pore. It affects us both very much, so much. So th so thank you from our hearts. Mm. Jiva Maya Devi Dasi and Indra Jats. <coughs> thank you, Jiva Maya Devi Dasi and Indra Nuja Prabhu. <coughs> Next. Welcome aboard. This is a Dait Yari Hari Das. From uh, Brahmachari from uh, Cardiff. Brahmachari from Cardiff. Name is? Dait Yari Hari Devi Daicha, see, could you speak clearly? Daicha Hari Hari Das. Daicha Hari Hari. Yeah. Daicha Hari Hari. What a nice name. Okay. Daicha Hari Hari. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for your daily readings. I was just wondering about how the attitude we have affects our ability to associate with the Srimad Bhagavatam when hearing it. Is it that if our attitude is wrong initially, but we still attempt to submissively hear the Bhagavatam, that everything else follows? Or do we have to deliberately adjust our internal attitude as a separate endeavor to be able to properly access, associate, and become eternally affected by what we hear? Both. You have to make the effort to control your mind while you're hearing, and you have to go on hearing. Yato yato nishtaliti manas chanchala mastidam yatas yatas yato atmanyeva macham yat. Krishna says wherever the mind wanders, you have to bring it back under the control of the self. So that's your, that's what your part of it is. Sarva dharman prichaja mami kam sharanam. And what does the word braja mean besides the eternal braja of dham? The braja means go or come. It's a verb. The word braja is a verb. Sarva dharma and You have to give up all other dharmas and mame come. Only to me. Braja. Come. You have to go, you have to go to in the Bhagavata. You have to take steps. Of course, if if you hear every day, you are going to the Bhagavata. But the effort has to be made. And even if your mind is not able to fix constantly and taste all the things that we just heard from the last chapter of the Bhagavatam, Prabhupada said, just tolerate and keep doing it. And it will purify you. But we just heard the Bhagavatam will purify you by constant and regular hearing the Bhagavatam. Everything will be purified. But it takes you your conscious effort to be able to hear every day, to be able to want to hear every day. The Bhagavatam will take care of everything, but you have to do your part and show up. And you don't sit there and your mind goes everywhere and you think that you're shown up. You're not completely shown up. But even if you're like that, if you just sit there every day and hear, you'll become purified. Maya is very powerful. She wants you to stop. I heard a very wonderful little uh, anecdotal. I was listening this morning to a uh, lecture. I mean, uh, yeah. It was New Mayapur, 1976. Prabhupada was, wasn't feeling so well. He was going back to India to get his health back. And so he, he, gave a, he, he was giving Bhagavad Gita class and there were quite a few older devotees there because, you know, he wasn't there. That was the last time. They knew this was the last time that he was going to come to France. And uh, so they were. he just he just gave about a five, ten-minute lecture and then he just turned it over to the devotees and he said, now discuss it. Discuss this point. What is the difficulty? And the devotees came out with this barrage of questions and Prabhupada dealt with each one so perfectly, so sweetly. And one of them was uh, Srila Prabhupada 
sometimes even when we're sincere and we try, we can't do it properly. And Prabhupada said, you, chant, you can't chant Hare Krishna? And everybody started to laugh. And he said, there is no failure in Krishna consciousness. There is no failure in chanting Hare Krishna. Uh, and then he said, just tolerate and go on hearing and go on serving. That's it. There's no pill you can take. And you, you, what are you, who, can, who are we? We're just a speck in the universe. What can we do? What can we control? The only thing we control is our own minds and senses. The real hero is the one who controls his mind and senses and agrees to put himself in front of the sound vibration of the, of the Srimad Bhagavatam every day, every day, every day, without fail. And if you do that, Krishna appreciates it very much because of what we just heard. The Bhagavatam is Krishna. And so if you're, if you're, if you're eager to be with somebody, doesn't that person, that somebody, doesn't that one person want to be with you? Sure, it's natural. The goal is to get a taste and the goal of the taste is to fall in love with Krishna. The problem with us is we don't actually have love for Krishna. But even if you don't have love for Krishna, you can practice. Act like you do. And act like you do means to show up every day and read the Bhagavatam. Try to understand. And if you can't understand, Prabhupada said, read it again. You don't need to have a very fancy you know, curriculum drawn up with tests and all these things to be able to memorize everything. That's nice, it's good, it's not bad at all. But you don't need that. You just have to hear again and again, sincerely, and try to understand. Make the effort to try to understand. And over time, it will sink in, guaranteed. Krishna is in your heart. This is the way you cultivate the taste, the cultivate the desire, the strength of the desire. Okay? No, something from you do tomorrow. Hare Krishna, you do tomorrow. He says, Dearest Srila Gurudev, please accept my prostrate obeisances and all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Words cannot express my gratitude to you for sharing your undivided attention to Srila Prabhupada's books. But moreover, by doing so, you have been irrevocably installing fearlessness into our hearts. Since you started doing these broadcasts, they have been a constant source of spiritual heat an inspiration that is so desperately needed in this perplexing age. Mm -hmm. I can feel I can feel Srila Prabhupada's constant smile beaming through your readings. I pray that we can take all the fruits we are gaining from these readings and share them with all those in need in the same manner that you do every single day. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Yudhutama. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. He says, those mosquitoes must have been sent on a special mission by the Supreme Lord of bringing together His Grace Vaisheshika Prabhu and your good self to start this wonderful recitation <laughs> of the of the Yeah. The mosquitoes are not ordinary. No living being in the Holy Dham is ordinary. Charlie, Charlie Davison. Hare Krishna, Charlie. Bhakta Charlie. Hare Bo. He says, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for these nectar readings. Uh, Jai Shri. Says, she says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble Hare obeisance. Krishna, Jai Shri. Hare Bo. Hare Bo. And all glories to Srila Prabhupada. 
Thank you so much for your daily reading that guides us through the nectar of Srila Prabhupada's books. Without your association and encouragement, there is no way I can read through the whole Srimad Bhagavatam cover to cover the second time. Looking forward so much to for the reading of Chaitanya Charitamrita, that is the most nectarian of all, forever in debt for your mercy, your servant Jai Sri Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna Jai Sri Devi I, I pray that uh, the, the transportation becomes normal love so that you can come and see us in the 30th of July. Hare Krishna. I look forward. We hope that you're safe <coughs> and uh, well and happy in Hong Kong. Mm. Mm. Says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you very much for delivering us the complete and transcendental treasure of Srimad Bhagavatam. Tonight I liked very much the part of the purport, chapter 12, 12, 13, 19, which I like to quote, if you permit. Please do. The words Tad Rupena, Tad Rupina, and Tad Atmana in this verse clearly indicate that Lord Krishna himself originally spoke Srimad Bhagavatam to Brahma and then continued to speak this literature through the agency of Narada Muni, Dagpayana Vyasa, Shukadev Goswami, and other great sages. In other words, whenever saintly devotees vibrate Srimad Bhagavatam, it is to be understood that Lord Krishna himself is speaking the absolute tr truth through the agency of his pure representatives. End quote. This reminded me of how Sri the Prabhupada said that it was not he who wrote his books, but that Lord Krishna himself would come to him, sit down and start dictating. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. And it's a fact that that in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, <coughs> you know, Shukadeva is called uh, Shuka, parrot. Uh, Gopi Puranadana Prabhu points out that when Shukadeva finally was convinced to come out of his mother's womb, he was there, but he was already fully self-realized. And so he didn't want to come out into the material world. It's so dangerous and again become attracted to the material energy. So Vyasadeva finally went to Krishna himself and asked him to come personally and request Shukadeva to come out. So he did, anyway, he did, and then immediately just went away. He ran. He was 16 years old already. And he just came out of the room and ran away. And Vyasadeva was running after him. Wait, wait. And he just ran away. So Vasudeva was very, very, because uh, he had heard, it was the Bhagavatam that he heard, part of it, just a little bit of it, that he heard, that called him out of the womb. And then Krishna, of course, came personally. And then when he ran away, Vedavyas very intelligently put his disciples in different places. And when he was wandering here and there, they would chant some shlokas. I, I don't know which ones exactly, but you can imagine. And those shlokas attracted him back. And then he heard the whole 18,000 verses of Srimad Bhagavatam. Of course, he was not an ordinary person. He could remember every single verse and never forget it just by hearing it once. Wouldn't that be nice? And then came. Then, then he went and repeated the same thing exactly without changing a word. And all the, the discussions that hadn't happened yet are all there. The, the discussions before, the discussions after, the whole thing came out. That's the, the fullest meaning of Trikalavya. And not only that, but it's described in the purports of Acharyas and Prabhupada that 
just like when a parrot will be, cut the beak with its beak uh, fruit I'm not sure what kind of fruit I think it's a mango but it may be another kind of fruit and particularly because of the enzymes in the coming out of the beak and cutting it ripens and it becomes especially sweet so even though he just repeated every word without without changing one word it came out sweeter so that's the meaning of that verse that each time it's repeated you know it gets sweeter even if you don't change the word and explain it in wonderful you know erudite you know uh, ways uh, it gets sweeter according to the consciousness of the person who is speaking it So that w- that's what Prabhupada's plan was to uh, purify, uplift the whole world by the mass distribution of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, Chaitanya Jodi Tamrita. Anybody who participates in this un- in any way, shape or form is, is not coming back to this material world. not easy to understand but if you understand it just a little bit how sweet is that all right i look forward it's 8 30 now i have to stop i'm losing my voice something else there's a couple more a couple more oops this is from uh Dainli Thai, Hare Krishna. He says, numerous conch shells are sounding and madangas and other drums make a tumultuous festival. <laughs> Joyful shouting arises from throngs of devotees. <laughs> jai ho, jai ho, well done and congratulations and fills the skies. <laughs> Many flowers, flags and festoons are seen everywhere. <laughs> Fanfare is heard all over, all glories, all gratitude. Jai ho, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Bo, thank you. Rathi Manjari wrote one more thing. I also loved this part, Srimad Bhagavatam 12, 13, 2. May you all be protected by the winds caused by the Lord's breathing <laughs> in his sleepy condition. So soothing. Well, when we breathe out the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's the same. Exactly the same. So maybe may the breath of the Srimad Bhagavatam purify our hearts and give us that sweet taste of Krishna consciousness and she goes on to write this and then this poetic sentence from the purport one must simply allow the pastimes of Lord Kurma to blow within one's heart like a favorable breeze then one will surely find spiritual peace yes we'll let you have the last word Rati you deserve it <laughs> Very beautiful, very beautiful. Picked out the most uh, artistic, she's such an artist, our most artistic expression. All right, everyone, thank you very much. It's been my more than pleasure. It's been, I don't can't express it, actually. But tomorrow we'll start afresh. Chaitanya Charitamrita. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shri Shukadev Goswami ki jai, Shri Parikshit Maharaj ki jai, Sutta Goswami ki jai, Sages of Sai Manami Sharanya ki jai, Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna ki jai, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai, Gaur Premanandi Hari Bhava, Sri the Prabhupada ki jai, all the Vaishnav devotees of the Lord ki jai. See you tomorrow for the beginning of the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita Haribo.